Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here. All right, so today I'm going to be heading off into Arena with one of my favorite mono lightning teams. Uh, kind of just playing around, looking for some strong dark teams, definitely looking for some strong wind teams with Sadali and potentially his VC. Uh, just to kind of like pair lightning uh, with uh, what's strong right now in Arena. I'm also gonna be doing a soft review for Eliza. Uh, who will be coming out. So for all of you guys who would like to hear my thoughts on Eliza, I will be doing that at the end of this video or towards the end of this video after the, the duels. Um, it is my first uh, shot at doing a character review. Uh, keep in mind that I do all of these videos through my phone. Um, I, do, I did just get a new laptop and we'll be working on uh, better videos in the future. But for now, it's just going to be me kind of overviewing Eliza through Ultima. Okay, so that being said, uh, let's go through the team that I have for today. This is actually a pretty fun team. Uh, there's two variations that I built of this team. One of them is more built towards uh, Esther being able to take more Evadi units. But one of the downfalls of this is that uh, Esther gets very low magic resistance. And so she kind of gets eaten. Uh, it was I basically put together this team because someone recommended that I might be able to use triple trick on Esther uh, for a little bit of a lack of accuracy to compensate for that because this lowers their evasion actually before the hit goes off. Uh, so I thought that's actually a great idea. I threw it on there uh, throughout my like, and I did like 25 battles earlier today. Um, I ended up switching the team over to a slightly different variation. I started running Esther a little bit less geared towards accuracy, even though I'm still running Exorcist VC. Um, I, in 25 battles, I have yet to see her actually use it, even though I'm positive it's turned on. But if we go into here, the stats, Esther's sitting at 10.3k HP, 108 agility, dex over 450, luck 365, attack 1600, defense 51, spirit 18. In the back end, she has 77% slash resist. So that's freaking insane. 25% pierce, 15% strike, 10% missile, and negative 13% magic. So still, but the thing with Resnick is that Resnick really kind of pumps up the defense of a team. So, you know, she's still weaker to magic, but she's just an absolute physical tank from the gods right now. Okay, so moving on and by the way i'm running her luck and attack on the stones for cloud he's sitting at 8.6 khp 106 agility 360 dex 330 luck about 1500 attack 22 defense 7 spirit in the back end all the resistances look very good um out here i'm running him with uh old doa's apron hp bonus and agility bonus as you can see there's all 12 passives I'm getting closer and closer to having um, all the passives fully leveled. And uh, going into Resnick, she's sitting at 7.5 KHP, 113 agility, 370 dex, 300 luck, 1300 magic, 46 defense, 28 spirit. And her resistance is a little low on magic, but not bad on missile, really good slash, and then pretty low on uh, pierce and strike. Okay, so that being said, Let's get into the battles for today. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Here we have Paul. This team does look interesting. Apple Mango. Kind of curious actually because i thought about getting a sedali's vc just to have for other wind units um it's pretty interesting right there that's a potential team to fight here we have sedali Ooh, this looks really interesting the stats are looking a little low i don't think he's got the stones yeah he's missing the stones juba okay Okay, well here's an interesting one. It looks like, is this going to be an evade team? Let's see. Okay, so 2B is running evade. So, why don't we... Actually, we do have triple trick on. Okay, so I'm going to fight this team and see if Esther will actually use triple trick against 2B. We'll see how it goes. 
Also, this would be a pretty good example of Ju uh, Esther's tankiness. Uh, so we're fighting basically an entire physical team right now. I'm hoping that she will use triple trick and that it will show uh, somewhat of an improvement. I've ran a lot of battles with this team so far. I've been running all kinds of different comps uh, with all kinds of characters that I haven't really looked at for a long time. And uh, this week I was thinking I've been missing some of my old uh, like favorite teams and this is one of them. So today I figured I'd have a nice little fun day and throw it in and have some fun. Ended up doing like 25 battles. But still, I mean, it's tough to raise your rank when you're not uh, using any of the like bonus units or VCs. Because I'm still at 1700 even though I'm 25 in a row right now. Okay, so here comes 2B. She's going to hit with the Limit Break against Cloud. So Cloud also looking pretty tanky right there. See what Esther does. She goes for her Limit Break. That's pretty common. She'll normally run in and do the Limit Break. June's evasion isn't high, so... Ooh, she still manages to hit 2B. Resnick coming in with a, another uh, buff. Wow. Okay, so Cloud just took them down pretty easily. Tifa's going to come in. Resnick going for the limit break right here. He's gonna raise everyone's attack and magic and remove all their debuffs. Here we have Esther going for Surging Storm. Tifa survives it, but she will not survive Cloud. Okay, well we didn't get to see uh, Triple Trick. Honestly, the team went down too fast. In retrospect, I realized I didn't check their trust stones at all. I probably should have done that. Uh, but that's what it looks like when you fight a team that doesn't have fully built trust house. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Maybe we'll go for a light team, full evade. Pretty close right here. Actually, that, that actually looks pretty fun. Let's go for this. Maybe she'll use triple trick on Locke or Elena. Okay, Resnick looking pretty good at 8k HP. I'd be happy if I could get her to 9, uh, but without Aegion going in a main slot, it's definitely a little harder. Cloud's sitting at 9.2k HP though, I'm happy with that. Okay, so Elena's gonna have re-raise and courage, and it looks like Locke will also have re-raise. Ooh, Elena hitting pretty hard, actually. Cloud goes for the triple slash. He puts Elena on Courage. We are going to get a chance for uh, Esther to use Triple Trick right here. She might prioritize Surging Slash. I guess we'll see. She goes for Taunting Blade, takes out Yuna. Not a bad move. Okay, Elena goes for the hit right there. Uh, puts Esther onto Courage. Cloud takes down Elena, she is going to be re-raised, and a lock is going to probably take out Esther right here. Okay, Cloud has one triple hit left. He's going to reflex Elena's move right here. Ooh, nice hit by her. Ah, he goes for the triple hit on Locke, who has re-raised. I don't know why he prioritized him. We'll see how it goes right here. So Cloud also looking pretty tanky. All right, Esther or er, Resnick coming in with the with the barrier move. Elena still hitting pretty hard, but Cloud has ooh he still has sharpshoot. Okay, thank God. Okay, Locke trying to take him down. Resnick is going to come in with a heal right here. I thought that Cloud was out, but I'm happy that I <laughs> I'm happy that my prior self knew how to build Cloud and keep on sharpshoot. All right, so pretty dang good. Definitely took them out. Going down to rank 1300, we are 2-0. and oh. uh, Definitely would have been cool. I was hoping that Locke wasn't going to get that hit off on Esther before she got the chance to do something. Okay, going into the third fight. Here we have Snake. 
Ooh, he does have his card. I don't think that the trust stones are fully built. Yeah, see, he only has six. Alright, here's another one. Let's see. This one does look better. It is better. Let's see how these are. Ah, nah. Not good enough. Okay, he's only 107. This one doesn't even have Sadali. Oop, this is the wrong team. 101. Noblesse. You know, I'm kind of surprised, honestly, that there's not more of him. Here we go. Oh yeah, this one has it. Ah, only half? Let's see if Joom has full passives. Nope, only one set. And uh, Luartha? 1600 attack, not bad. She's fully built. I'm down to go for this. They're missing half the passives on Sedali, half the passives on Joom, but they are fully built, and Luartha is fully built. Stats are relatively close. We're about 200 off or so, 250 off. Definitely curious to see how this is. Cloud and Esther both have much lower faith. Um, they should both be at around 50 or 55. So it'll be interesting to see Sadali try to get his charm off. I know it still has actually a really good chance of going off, um, even on characters with lower faith. Okay, so Sadali over there sitting at 8.7k HP. Esther's going to use Revitalize. Cloud's going to use Soldier's Honor. I like this starting setup because Cloud can hit both of the other uh, comrades with Soldier's Honor right off the bat which opens him up for Inherited Tyranny right away. Uh, I have him on Nightblade Mastery as a passive because Mercenary puts him too close to the other team too fast, and he almost never gets off Inherited Tyranny. Uh, I also turned off Barrage on Cloud so that essentially for the same thing. Okay, so both of them looking quite tanky right there against Joom. Okay, Esther going for the Limit Break right here. I'm guessing she'll tank it fairly well. She'll probably take 3,500 damage. 4,500, okay, so a little better than I thought. Okay, Cloud right here at 91 AP going for his limit break. 9,500 and Joom goes down. She is going to get the re-raise. Luartha sitting in the back and she's going to hit hard. She has 1,600 attack. Okay, Sadali so coming in with the limit break right here. If this charms Esther, this is going to be brutal for the team. Okay, it does charm Esther. This is going to freaking hurt. Fully AP Regan. She has everything that she needs to destroy. Oh, and Joom did not prioritize her. Esther takes down Cloud in a single hit. Absolutely so strong. Wow, Esther's literally just about to take down Resnick as well. Okay, finally, she's uncharmed. That absolutely hurt. Okay, Resnick coming in so clutch right here. Sadali pulling the unavailable hit, kills Joom. This will be quite the comeback if we manage to get this. Okay, Resnick, we'll see what she can do right here. She goes to the Law of Invigoration, heals Esther. Sadali's going to get the next hit. Ooh, Esther jumped ahead. All right, Cloud is out. Resnick is gonna go for another heal, healing herself. We have Luartha, she's gonna get one good shot right now. We'll see what she does with it. She goes for Javelin Fall, doesn't quite do it. Ooh, Esther gets put onto Courage and we're able to still pull it back. Absolutely great fight, that was super fun. Um, man, charming Esther is terrifying, holy cow. All right, she literally just like annihilated Cloud right there. 9.5k damage, just gone. Okay. Oh shit, here is Zalintha from our very own Farsight Guild. All right, I know that he is going to have fully built stuff. Let's see. 
Okay, actually not quite there yet. Let's see how June is looking. No passives either. Okay, well, I guess he hasn't finished building this team yet, but I know that he will be super, super strong. As you guys can see, he does have the Conqueror title. He has gotten number one. Uh, he is the highest rank in our guild and one of our sub leaders. But for now, since he's missing the trust stones, I think we will look for some other stuff. Here we have, okay, this is going to be a very well-built team. You can tell by the stats right off the bat. 11 passives. It's the exact same team, actually. 12 passives, and Luartha is going to be probably around the same. 12 passives. Okay. All right, well, let's go for this. I'm actually pretty excited. But man, that charm is so hard to deal with. I mean, if it's like you're getting charmed at 55 faith, I mean, I could lower it to 50, but I don't really think that's going to make a difference. Um, I mean, maybe a tad bit, but that is tough. It's definitely hard to deal with that, especially when it's hitting someone like Esther. <laughs> Okay, so if Sedali's sitting at 8.2k HP, here we have a Esther at 11. Cloud's gonna use Soldier's Honor. Luartha over there at 8.2. Jum ready in the middle. Okay, she's gonna use Vacuum Veil. Resnick getting the physical shield off on Cloud. Esther gets off Courage. Okay, here we go. Missile attack resist up, accuracy up. Okay, so it's kicking off basically the same way as last time. We'll see what uh, Esther chooses for Stormbrand right here. She did not use Taunting Blade, which actually was to our own detriment last time. Um, because since she didn't use Taunting Blade, she won't be prioritized if that charm goes off. Here we have Cloud going to use Ascension on Zoom, but she does have full health. Oh, it very nearly kills her. Esther going to use quick action. Hopefully she will get off an ability. Resnick is going to use her limit break early in the fight. So we're already we're already fighting hard just to stay in it. Uh, Esther is going to counter with her limit break, thankfully from that quick action right there. Hopefully it can take out Luartha. It doesn't. It does manage to take down Joom. She is going to get the re-raise, but l hopefully Cloud will take both of them out with Triple Slash. That's what I like to see. Okay, now we have Sedali. He's going to go for not his limit break. Interesting. He prioritized the AoE, AoE hit because he could. Esther goes for Stormbrand. Cloud is going to run in and hit him with Braver. And it is over. Up to a 29 winning streak. It looks like we are 4 and 0 at the moment. Looking pretty good. Okay. We have one fight left. That team looks pretty fun. I think I'm good on the wind teams for now. That was a very strong wind team. We still managed to do well. Even on the time where we did get charmed, we were able to pull it off. I'd like to find a good dark team, but it doesn't look like there's a single one here right now. Um, tch -tch 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 -tch. I have been told by a couple guildmates that they have fought water teams with lightning teams and actually lost. Um, I'd like to show you guys that even if you have a very strong water team, if you have a correctly built lightning team, there's no way that they can take them down, but it doesn't look like there are any here. Okay, so I think, why don't we go for this? This looks like a pretty fun team. Okay, so we're going to go for Terra, Megamont, and Yuna for the last fight, and we will see how it goes. I really like Terra. I wish I would have pulled for her. Um, at the time, I was more focused on Celis and Locke. Uh, it's really hard to build three characters uh, all at once. Uh, two is kind of like my max. 
Unfortunately, I missed out on Terra because of that, but did get Celeste, did get Locke. Both of them are awesome. Both of them pair very well in their respective element. And Terra will come back at some point in time in the future. Okay, so she's not going to start with Courage. Hopefully she'll get it off in her next go. It's definitely unfortunate to fight teams that don't get off the Courages and the re-raises because it takes down the potential of a great fight. Ooh. We'll see. Because if Yuna runs in, she might just recast that spell again on Yuna again. Which would not be ideal. Okay, Esther gonna use Storm Guardian right there. Okay, her defenses are just stacked through the roof right now. Cloud's gonna use Punisher. We'll see what Terra does. Okay, she gets pulled out, she does not get off Courage. She's gonna go for her limit break, hitting Cloud. Doesn't do that much damage. Megamon's gonna run out, he's gonna go for Maiming Slash. It's gonna lower the healing potency on Esther. Yuna's gonna run out and use her limit break as well. Looks like it's gonna hit Esther. Not bad, 4591. Resnick is gonna come out to counter using her limit break to heal. Okay. Nice, that's awesome. Okay, Yuna's gonna get the re-raise. We'll see what Cloud does right now. He's gonna get the triple slash off. Mega Monk goes down, Yuna goes down. Mont is gonna get the re-raise and Terra's gonna get another shot at us. She uses Meltdown, does quite a bit of damage. Megamont also doing a decent amount of damage. Resnick is gonna get the heal on Esther. Esther is gonna go for Bolting Slice and the battle is over. Okay, so up to a 30 winning streak, not so bad. Ranks around a thousand. Uh, if I was prioritizing using units and VCs that are getting the bonus right now, it would probably be much higher. Uh, but this team sounded fun to me, and I'm happy that I was able to put it together. I really like running Esther on Ariman. Um, it definitely will have, will have some drawbacks if you're fighting evasive teams, because as we know, Esther's two weaknesses are accuracy and magic. Um, but all in all, I think this team is very strong and very fun. Okay, so moving into the second part of the video i am going to be doing a soft review on eliza uh, i've never done this on a unit before but i've had people asking me uh, to do little reviews on units and which units that i'm planning to pull for um, so let's just look at her really quick in here and then i'm going to transition out of war divisions into ultima and to kind of like go through in a more direct way her entire kit Okay, so her main job is Hunter, her two sub jobs are Trick, Lancer, and Ranger. Her limit burst is called Cage of Thorns, it lowers target's ice resist for three turns, that deals damage large, and lowers move by one for three turns. It looks like it has about six range, no, yeah, range height, no, range height five, okay, so that's really good. That's one thing about uh, archers is that the height is really, really, really beneficial to them. Okay, here we have triple flight, a three hit damage, so that's going to basically destroy any barrier to the target that reduces AP upon a critical hit. Then we also have warning volley, looks similar to barrage, not quite as big on the AoE, and maybe one uh, step, not as far. Okay, oh yeah, so it has range height five, the area height is zero, zero, and one. Okay, so deals damage medium to targets within range and lowers their CT. Okay, um, off the bat, she looks pretty interesting, uh, but let's go over and check out her full kit and we'll go from there. All right, so today I'm going to be looking at a soft review of Eliza. Uh, I am on Ultima. I will put this link in the description of the video for anyone who wants to check it out. Okay, so her comprehensive evaluation on Ultima, and keep in mind, this is on JP, so this is not an evaluation considering global units, okay? So she is a 9.7 out of 10. Uh, she has th move three, jump two. She's 90 cost. Her master ability gives her uh, ice characters up 10% uh, ice attack. Own shooting attack resistance penetration plus 20. Own attack ability activation time minus 10%. So it looks like she has some, some things that include casting time. I'm guessing that's in 
uh, maybe Ranger as a sub job. So it says that Eliza is a long range debuffer that specializes in obstructing the actions of enemies, starting with limit break with move down effect. You can scatter abnormal conditions such as, I'm guessing this is Berserk, AP down, CT down, and don't move from a distance. It also has shooting attacks that reduce the durability of enemies such as defense and ice resistance down, so it is possible to increase the party's damage. Also says, since Eliza has multiple abilities that increase the defense and shooting penetration rate, it is easy to generate firepower against tanks and durable enemies. Especially for only one turn, the penetrating shot that can increase the defense and the shooting penetration rate at the same time is powerful. Strong against avoiding characters with greatly improved hits and hits. Eliza is strong against evasive characters because she learns the sense of smell of hunters who greatly increase the hit rate and the aiming effect of hitting. So this is a uh, passive of hers that is improved in her EX board. If you activate the sense of smell of the hunter, it will be easier to hit the debuff ability to the avoiding characters so you can gain an advantage in the battle situation. It's worth noting that Eliza has a low magic resistance of negative 15, so it is vulnerable to magic attacks. So her versus Terra, or Fire Glacy is going to be brutal. Uh, as we know, uh, Esther is also one of those characters that has very low magic resistance, and it is hard to compensate that. Uh, that being said, Eliza is also a ranged attacker, so she is going to be further away from the battle than Esther is, who's more of like a vanguard kind of tanky bruiser. So, protect yourself with a tank when fighting powerful magic attackers such as Kuroko no Helena or Glacera. Eliza has an ice attribute that goes well with water, so it is recommended to organize her with Celis, who has a magical sword. Okay, so it looks like here her evaluation went down to 9.6. Her EX job's name is Mind's Eye. Um, by making an Eliza an EX, you can learn attack after defense down, release uh, protect shell, so it gets rid of protect and shell as a debuff. Range plus shooting attack up, and the attack performance will greatly improve. In particular, the effect of increasing the range plus increasing the shooting attack by strengthening the support ability is large, and it is possible to strengthen the behavior inhibition that is the specialty of Eliza. Since the effect of range plus one is large, let's make it an EX job when operating Eliza. Okay, so these are the abilities that are going to get improved for her through EX. One is strengthening the arrow of broken armor which gives looks like it has range height of five damage after defense down for three turns that's pretty good damage after defense down medium here is the passive that gives range plus two and shooting attack power up and it's going to be a shooting attack power plus 15. also release tororoki uh it looks like damage after relieving the target of protect and shell within range and this one is aoe so uh, units that will get Protect and Shell are Joom. Uh, so yeah, she is going to be very, very good at fighting uh, Joom in particular. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, these are the stat bonuses that will come from EX board. It looks like uh, the majority of people are choosing Hunter as the sub job, as you can see it's recommended here. Um, da 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 da. A hunter you can give sneak peek or poison is also useful, so it is an option depending on the resistance of the enemy. So it looks like nine votes went to hunter, six votes went to trick lancer, and four votes went to hunter, um, which is basically I think hunter is supposed to be the main job up there. Uh, her support abilities are going to be hunter's eyes, range plus one, tips for trick lancers, increased critical rate and defense penetration rate, defense penetration rate plus forty, which is pretty good. So you're definitely going to want to use that, and then hunter's knowledge, which is range plus one and accuracy up, which can be uh, improved to range plus two with accuracy up plus shooting attack up. So you're probably going to use tips for tricks, lancers, and hunter's knowledge, um, just based off seeing it right now. Uh, it says it is recommended to increase the range and defense penetration rate of Eliza's so, so, so Sapoabi is the Japanese way of saying support abilities. Sapoabi. With the eyes of hunters and the knowledge of trick lancers, whose performance will improve with EX conversion. If you haven't converted Eliza to EX, replace the hunter's eyes with the hunter's knowledge if you want to extend the range beyond the firepower. Okay, so looking at her reaction abilities, and keep in mind the English on here is... Uh, is off just because it is google translating so <laughs> if you thought that whoever wrote this just like uh, needed to go back and pass middle school english uh, <laughs> it's google that needs to do that okay so of the two uh, reaction abilities we have ice eclipse trap 
When damaged, the target's shooting attack resistance and ice resistance are reduced for three turns with a probability and first strike. It gives shooting attack resistance minus 25, ice attribute resistance minus 25. So this is a really interesting uh, reaction ability that debuffs the enemy. Also, it looks like she has parting, which it looks like this is basically reflex. Avoid all attacks with probability. Okay, so Eliza's reaction ability is recommended to be ice erosion trap so that it can reduce the resistance of the enemy or a closeout that can avoid even an inevitable attack. Uh, so it looks like, I mean, both are good. I always like Reflex, but I would definitely be testing out Ice Eclipse Trap just to see how it works, especially if you're running Mono Ice. Uh, if you're running her as a solo character, I would definitely go with Reflex. Okay, so going into the Espers that are good for her, we have, I don't know, Maniple? I think that's probably not its name. We have Maniple. Uh, Brachioids, Chocobo, and Quarrel. So Brachioids give shooting attack up 15%, magic resistance up 15%, attack and quickness are high. Okay, so it's fast, it has high attack, it compensates for magic resistance and gives shooting attack. Uh, whatever this ice little uh, mech is, it gives ice attribute ability attack up to 25%, puncture attack is up to 15%, I'm guessing that's shooting. Uh, but it does say puncture, so it might be like shooting attack resist piercing, but I, as far as I know, espers don't have any defense piercing or slash attack resist piercing or missile attack resist piercing, etc. It also says the attack status is very high, but it's not going to be as fast. For me, I would probably go with Brachioids if you have it. If you don't, you also have Chocobo or Quarrel to use for her. Um, let's see what it says here. Since Eliza is good at shooting ice, it goes well with summoned beach such as Maniple, which was that mech, which has an ice ability attack up, Brachioids, which has shooting attack up, and Chocobo. Okay, so that looks pretty good. For the VCs, it's recommending Chaos Odin, Fruit of Life. Fruit of Life is the VC that will be coming uh, next week for her. Um, uh, so far, just to give like my subtle opinion, um, I would say that there are going to be two good ice ranged gunner slash archers coming out. Uh, the first is Eliza, as you guys know. The second is Ayala, Alaya, I can't remember what her name is. Um, and she comes out after Wind Glacy later on in the future. If I had to choose, like in this game, I feel like, you know, it takes a lot of resources to build a unit. Um, not everyone can go for every unit. Very rare that someone can go for every unit. And essentially when you pull for a unit, I always brace for pity. So like I'm extremely rarely going to pull for a unit that I'm not bracing for pity as in I don't already have enough viz to take them all the way to pity because the game severely punishes players who pull for units but don't have enough vizier to go to pity because if you spend 20k on a character and you don't get them that is a massive setback like a massive massive setback so better to be patient to wait and to guaranteed get yourself a character than to wish for the best with the gambling and the luck in my opinion that being said if you are going to go all the way to pity um, and you have a choice between a 90 cost gunner and a 100 cost uh, gunner or archer, uh, it seems like it would be better to go for the 100 cost characters. They last longer, they have better kits typically, etc. So, you know, for me, I'm leaning more towards just pulling for Fruit of Life, the vision card. You know, out of her kit so far, I haven't seen anything super crazy that's standing out at me. We are going to go through the rest of it. But it looks like if you pulled Fruit of Life, it would be a great VC since it increases shooting attack slash resistance of the ice party, increases the AP slash hit of the wearer, which I'm guessing is accuracy, and further improves the hit of the wearer with dexterity. So this looks like a great card overall. It's going to be a great card for Alaya or Ayala or whatever her name is. Um, and also, since I'm hoping that Squall will be ice and he will be similar to lightning i'm guessing he would be like an astrius lightning um hybrid uh this card would also uh affect him well as greatly as well okay so going through the rest of it if you do have dark odin uh, if you are planning on pulling for fruit of life if you have fenrir or sharpened concentration all of these are going to be good vcs for her um, it looks like since Eliza is good at shoot, physical shooting attacks, VCs such as Dark Odin and Fenrir are both going to be good. Uh, Fruit of Life that can increase shooting attack and sharpen concentration. Okay, so let's get down into it. Looks like her uh, best in slot 
Uh, weapons and armors are the cataract, her bow, also the diamond coat, and the phantom bells. Um, bells are almost always great. Okay, so getting into her actual abilities, let's let's look for something uh, amazing here. So here we have tracking gate increases the speed of allies within the range centered on themselves for three turns and increases their own attack for three turns. Okay, pretty decent buff, but it looks like if she is going to be getting off bells or is going to need bells, then she's she's probably not going to be getting off more than two buffs um if ever because she's a ranged attacker so we're looking for one really good buff and honestly half the maps especially in arena are often short range which means she's only going to get off one buff and that's likely going to be bells so we'll see how it goes here we have crazy arrow uh damage to the target small and increase to the attack for three turns but the versatility effect makes it inoperable okay um not exactly sure what that means maybe it's like some type of don't move or something like that here we have triple arrow target three consecutive damage so this is a triple hit and reduces ap on a critical hit here we have menacing direction shooting this is a pretty good aoe attack it de uh, deals medium targets to within range and ct down i do like ct down Damage to target medium and defense down for three turns. Defense down is always nice. Um, it looks like, you know, here we have Orin, Gilgamesh, um, Laswell, all physical ice uh, units that would be able to utilize this debuff. Going into her main job sub abilities, here we have penetration, damage to the target after increasing its own defense penetration rate and shooting attack resistance penetration rate medium, not bad. Uh, Hunter sense of smell, sing significant increase in hit, hit and range plus one for three turns. Okay, so that increases hit rate, oh, increases accuracy and range. And we have the passive ability. When damage the targets, shooting attack resistance and ice resistance are reduced for three turns with probability and first strike. Okay, this is the uh, reaction. Okay, so nothing that's jumping out at me, to be honest. Here we have strong attack command. Attack up of allies within the range. Okay, so like I said, we're not going to really get the chance to use a lot of these buffs. And if we are, it looks like the very first one is the best one so far. Increases the range and attack up. Okay, we also have... Uh, trick thrust, damage to the target small and three turn attack, quick down and penetration. Okay, so not bad. Damage to targets within, the next one is cross break, damage to targets within the range centered on yourself, medium and three turn critical avoidance rate down. Okay, not bad also, that's if someone gets really close to her. Here we have bind slow, damage to the target medium and when a critical occurs, the healing power is greatly reduced for three turns and there's a probability that you will not be able to move for three turns as well. It's healing power down minus 50% and don't move at crit. Um, faith total times 0.5%, which seems standard. Here we have the AP break lance damage to the target medium and reduces AP uh, when critical occurs and penetrate. And we have counter trick, first strike counter attacks. This is a standard uh, counter ability. Then we have her defense penetration rate plus 40, passives, etc., etc. Going into her other hunter's abilities, sub abilities, here we have alert, greatly increases evasion rate. So, and reduces your resistance to all attributes and all attack types. So, not really anything else in her kit looking for evasion, so that's uh, just a no. Here we have charge, this is going to be why she gets that minus uh, attack ability activation time, uh, although you'll still probably turn this off. Here you have Poison Arrow, which can inflict poison, which is also pretty nice. High charge, regular damage to the target medium. Overcharge, which is also like charge, but has a casting time. Aiming, which is a medium target and guaranteed hit. Okay, so she has guaranteed hit. That's a plus. Uh, and we have uh, Reflex here. Avoid all attacks with probability. Okay, so going into her Limit Burst, it is... Damage after ice resistance down for three turns, large, and move minus one for three turns. Okay, so that's pretty good. So she's going to keep people away for a good amount of time, especially if she can hit the far back people. Um, let's see here. Um, out of HP, for starting HP, she's 74th out of 163. For attack, she's 64th out of 163. Uh, with the ability board included, she's going to get plus 63 attacks. So that's a, not even 300. Her agility will be 65, that's not bad. 
Her luck will be over 200, that's pretty good. Her dex will be about 260, that's also not bad. Move 3, jump 2, attack plus 20%. Um, here we have her resistances. Her attack type resistances will be 10%, minus 5% piercing, 10% strike, 15% shooting, and minus 10% magic. Even though up top it said it was minus 15% magic. So it'll be something to definitely check out. She has inherent resistance to toad, stop, and stun. <laughs> this is Stan. <laughs> And lastly, her TMR. Okay, so maybe this will be good. Interesting. Red Rose Dress. HP 270, critical plus 13, defense plus 10. It gets, an it gets an evaluation of 9 out of 10 points. And it gives the effect of recovering AP at critical time to itself for 3 turns. So it looks like when she does a critical hit, she will recover AP with this uh, TMR. Pretty interesting. Not really sure why you would run this over Bells or any other TMR that guaranteed gives you AP. Uh, doesn't really make sense to run something that only has a chance of giving you AP over guaranteed giving you AP. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. Um, and overall, her look is actually really cool. I really, really like archers. Um, her yeah her style is pretty freaking rad i love the boots i love the cloak i love the colors uh, i love the bow honestly her her aesthetic is awesome i give her aesthetic like a 9.5 out of 10. but i will say that at the end of the day there's nothing really here that is standing out to me for eliza um, her kit is definitely interesting but i would say that if you're on the fence about pulling for this unit um, or you're wondering about whether to pull for it uh, I don't think Sidali is so strong that you absolutely need to get the next Ice Gunner just to be able to take him out. Um, as you can see in my earlier part of the video, we dominated Wind with Lightning. Um, and I think that there are multiple elements that can do the same, even if you're not running Ice. And uh, that being said, if you already have part of the Viz for this character or all of the Viz for this character, I think that my recommendation is to just save your Vizior, wait for the next gunner who's going to be much better than Eliza, I think. Um, and if you really like the idea of an ice ranged unit, an ice gunner, an ice archer, etc., just go for the VC that's going to come out for Eliza, put that on Ayala or Alalia or whatever her name is, and uh, I think that you will uh, have a much better time with that. All right, well, I hope I did an okay job. Sorry that, uh, you know, the format of the video isn't the best, but um, you guys asked for a little bit of a review and what I plan on doing, so here it was. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments below if I can do something a little bit better or if you guys enjoyed it and just freaking loved it and uh, if it overall helped you guys uh, on your way. So that being said, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. Um, I really, really, really appreciate you guys. Uh, I appreciate you being here and thank you for listening. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.